All right, so here was yesterday's most straightforward play. Uh, CBNA 5254 weekly uh, CDS. Now CDSs are not my, they're not my strongest type of trade. Um, and I'm continuing to work on them and I, I, I believe I have like sizing or contextual issues with them, understanding where to apply them, where not to apply them, but they're pretty straightforward. So the ticker I chose was CBNA. Now here's the backdrop on that day. We just had a crazy good FOMC report and that bullishness just accelerated into it. Now we don't know if there's going to be profit taking up here or a pullback or if we're going to pull sideways or whatever. So we're kind of hanging suspended in midair. So you might be thinking, okay, well, if we're super extended, then I'm going to take some shorts, but that's the last thing that you want to do. Um, but you also can't really hop into long-term positions that you're not sure that you can take a big D1 pullback on. So you're either going to be going really, really long-term trades, like three, four-week contracts on stuff that you're okay with taking a D1 pullback on, where this pulls back to the ADMA or maybe even down to this level through here, where like this upward sloping trend line that it broke. Um, or you're going to take something that you can profit on today and your risk is mitigated where you, you don't really need to worry if you bag hold it. So I'm going to do one or the other. Now, CVNA is a very strong ticker. If you look at this D1 chart, we had this compression and then the FOMC popped it over that compression over the SMA really big relative volume, even bigger today and a lot of follow through where the market was just kind of flat. So I know this is a strong ticker, but it's starting to get quite extended ATR from where it's at. And this might need to pull back and retest. This is not something I want to just sit in and just watch because seeing a third stacked candle, the probability of that is eh, not that high. It's also got this sort of horizontal resistance through here. So I don't know if it's going to break through that either. So even though it's strong intraday, the D1 chart has couple of issues associated with it. Now there's this line through here that it looks like it broke through as well and that's a strong algo line or potentially could be which is a really nice one as well. But if you look back at all these like points here, 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 like this is a horizontal level that may shut this trade down. So it's strong getting there but I don't know what happens when it's going to get there which means this is not something I want to take like four week calls on and just cross my fingers and pray. Um, but it's very strong intraday. So here's how you take an intraday trade. You had a nice blast off. It's above VWAP. And then at this point, you can see that it's starting to still hold its gains. The relative volume is pretty high as well. It's like three times or like two times. It's got relative strength and it's in a strong sector as well. So if I put my ticker right there or like my indicator right there, you can see how SPY is below VWAP, just kind of fading off a little bit, maybe trying to fill the gap, maybe not. We're not sure yet. There's a lot of indecision in the market where nobody wants to start selling and get their face ripped off but nobody really wants to buy this far away from the ADMA on SPY. So we're looking at maybe like this point right about through here where this is continuing to go down but CVNA is holding support, test the high of the day right through there and then breaks out through there. And you can see this tiny little volume pop as well in there. So that's right where I took a 52-54 uh, CDS. And the reason is because right around this level, there could possibly be some more resistance. So if I take um, a trend line, and I, I'm assuming this is going to be a channel coming up through here, and I see that sort of situation, I know that this thing might crap out around sort of 54 sort of areas. So that's where my short strike is going to be. And then 52 is right at the money on it. Now on a Thursday, you can, you can aim for about 40% on that type of ticker. So entry here, exit there. And that's what that looks like on a really messy chart right through there. But that's the gist of that. Uh, and that's why I took that type of contract. Um, my one mistake on it though, was with, with spreads, you'll see like the, the bid and ask just popping all over the place and it's very scary because you'll see your trade going up and up and up and up and up. You're up like a dollar fifty on this thing so your entry is here and you're already up through there but the bid hasn't changed. These types of debit spreads will often just do nothing until they just immediately hit target. So you really need to just hit like put your profit target on it and just walk away from it which sounds so scary and it's something that I'm working on. So I took only about 35% instead of the full 40%, which I should have aimed for. Statistically is what you should do on a weekly CDS. But yeah, that's CVNA. That's why I took it 
as a CDS and not as a uh, long-term trade.